Final Fantasy IX's HD remaster arrived on the Nintendo Switch eShop in February 2019, bringing the game to Nintendo systems for the first time ever and inducting a whole new wave of players into its most infamous boss battles like Gizama Luke, Tantarian, Black Waltz No. 1, and Ark. This is the final Final Fantasy game to use the series' trademarked Active Time battle system, and while the difficulty level isn't anywhere near the same ballpark as, say, Fire Emblem 5 or the Dark Spire, it can be surprisingly challenging to those accustomed to more recent RPGs. Even to veteran players, the inner workings of Nine can be mysterious. That's why, in today's episode of RPG Maniacs, we're going to get crunchy and look at just how damage works in Final Fantasy IX. The basic physical damage formula is attack minus defense times a multiplier times a modifier. The modifier is just that enemy's resistance to the attack's element. It can be negative one if it absorbs the attack, 0.5 for half damage, one for normal damage, 1.5 for a weakness to that element, or zero if it's simply invulnerable to it. The most important part of the formula is actually the multiplier, which is used to set the minimum and the maximum damage of the attack. The multiplier varies weapon by weapon. Daggers, swords, rods, staves, spears, flutes, and claws all share one formula. Forks and hammers share another. Thief swords and knight swords share one more. And rackets are alone in their own separate category. Before we go on, there's one unusual piece of math in Final Fantasy IX that you should know about. Randomized modulo operations. You don't actually need to know how modulo operations work. Just know that when a formula says random mod, it means a number between zero and the number being worked on minus one. So random mod 100 is a random number between zero and 99. Random mod 24 is between zero and 23. And random mod 5000 is between zero and 4999. For the majority of weapons, the multiplier is equal to the character's strength stat plus a random mod of strength plus level divided by 8 plus strength plus 1. So the minimum multiplier is always equal to strength, and the maximum is equal to strength plus level divided by 8 plus strength plus 1 minus 1. So for example, when Steiner first joins your party, his level 1 strength is 24, and his broadsword has a weapon attack of 12. So Steiner's level 1 damage formula is 12 minus defense times a number between 24 and 24 plus 24 plus 1 divided by 8. Nothing in Final Fantasy IX actually has a defense stat of 0, and most of the enemies in Nine's Beast Diary have a defense of 10. So, running with that, the range will be 2 times 24 to 27, or when solved, 48 to 54 damage. And this is why damage doesn't change at all in the Evil Forest. Note that level isn't actually very important to this formula, that's true of all damage in Final Fantasy IX. Up until the 8th game, damage in Final Fantasy scaled intensely with level, so that hitting the damage cap could be very easy. 8 completely took level out of the damage formula, while 9 brought level back in as a minor modifier to the maximum range of attacks. The minimum range is based purely on character stats, which increase very gradually with level. The characters gain one point of strength approximately every 2-3 to three levels, which causes grinding to have a fairly minimal impact on damage. For Thief Swords and Knight Swords, the minimum multiplier is instead equal to the average of Strength and Spirit, and the maximum is equal to Strength plus Level divided by 8 plus that. This matters because these weapons are exclusive to Zidane and Steiner as alternatives to their daggers and regular swords, making them the only primary physical attackers in the group that can choose to have a different damage formula as Nine progresses. For Thief and Knight Swords to outdamage daggers and regular swords, Either the average of strength and spirit has to be higher than the strength by itself, or the equipped weapon has to have enough weapon attack over the equivalent dagger or sword so that it's strong enough to make up the difference when everything is multiplied out. The former never happens. The average can never be higher than strength by itself because spirit is capped at 50 in this game, while the strength cap is almost double that. So Thief and Knight Swords will never outdamage daggers and regular swords unless there's a big enough gulf in weapon attack. This is why, when the player first acquires the Gladius and Exploda for Zidane around the time they reach the Outer Continent, 
the Gladius will generally deal more damage. The difference between the two is a single point of weapon attack that should make the Exploda more powerful. But because of how this formula works, the Exploda needs to be a minimum of two points stronger than the Gladius to get a higher minimum and maximum. Forks and hammers are saddled with the worst multiplier. The minimum is always one, and the maximum is equal to strength plus level divided by eight. So there's always a risk of simply dealing damage equal to your weapon attack minus the enemy's defense. This, combined with Queen's strength growth, makes for very low lows and very low highs, with a lot of variance in between. Finally, the minimum modifier for the racket is equal to the average of strength and speed, and the maximum is equal to strength plus level divided by eight plus that. This only matters for Dagger and Echo, who both have the option to use the standard formula through their rods and flutes. Like with Thief and Knight Swords, Rackets can't actually surpass their counterparts without a significant physical advantage, because the average of strength and speed will always be equal to or less than strength by itself. In this case, Rackets actually do come out stronger, because the endgame Rackets have a significant attack advantage over rods and flutes. Even so, that doesn't mean you should be attacking with them. That takes care of physical damage, but what about magic? The magical damage formula is similar to what we already looked at. Magic damage is equal to spell power minus magic defense times a multiplier times a modifier. For almost all spells, the multiplier minimum is equal to the character's magic stat, and the maximum is equal to magic plus level divided by eight plus magic. This is actually identical to the physical modifier, but with strength swapped out for magic. So then, why does magic tend to deal so much more damage than physical attacks? In reality, magic at the beginning of the game is weaker than physicals, but appears to be more powerful because every enemy until the end of the ice cavern has an elemental weakness to fire. However, once the player starts acquiring 2nd and 3rd level spells, magic rapidly outpaces weapons in raw spell power. Blizzara, Thundara, and Fyra are all 5 points stronger than the Ogre and 9 points stronger than the Mithril Spear, while Bio is around 10 points stronger than the equivalent physical weapons when you learn it, and the 3rd level spells are all on par with endgame weapons despite becoming available in the middle of Disc 3. Vivi's most powerful spells, Flare and Doomsday, are stronger than any weapon in the game. This accelerates in the last quarter of the game, when Vivi gets access to the Reflect Double support ability that lets him double a spell's damage by bouncing it off an ally's Reflect status. He can hit the damage cap long before anyone else thanks to this ability. Aside from the primary physical and magical formulas, there are a lot of miscellaneous abilities and commands with their own properties. Throw, Summon, Sword Arts, Frog Drop, Thievery, Dragon's Crest, and so on. It would probably take a whole nother video to go through absolutely everything in the game, so I'm going to limit myself to the most important move of all, Sword Magic. These commands are only usable if both Steiner and Vivi are alive in the active party and not silenced. The damage formula for Sword Magic is Weapon Attack plus Spell Power minus Defense times Strength plus a random mod of level plus strength divided by eight. What makes this command so powerful is that it simultaneously combines the strength of Steiner's weapon with the spell VV is casting and targets the enemy's defense rather than magic defense. We already discussed how strong spell power is relative to weapon attack, but using the enemy's physical defense stat while also effectively doubling its power by combining it with Steiner's weapon attack makes for disproportionately powerful spells. The only concrete drawback is that it takes away from Steiner's MP, which is much more limited than Vivi's, but ethers are fairly plentiful in this game. Much of Final Fantasy IX is actually designed around splitting up the party to limit the player's use of sword magic to select scenarios designed for it. Even into the final dungeon, Lazaga Sword is often preferable to Steiner's more advanced sword arts because of many enemies having a weakness to ice that instantly brings the attack up to or near the damage cap. Now that we've looked into all these examples, how can we apply these formulas to a practical playthrough? Well, the maximum ranges for each attack aren't really practical to calculate. We can only ever depend on dealing at least the minimum, 
and anything higher than that is just a bonus that speeds along our game plan against a boss. But the minimums are easy enough to remember. Most enemies in Final Fantasy IX, including bosses, have a defense of 10 or somewhere approximately in that range. So for most weapons, you can simply reduce physical damage down to weapon attack minus 10 times strength. Popping into the menu here, we can see that at level 3, Zidane has a strength of 21 and an attack of 14, which multiplies out to 84 damage minimum. So regardless of how high it rolls, based on the multiplier, it will always deal at least 84 damage. The game's first major boss, the Plant Brain, has 916 hit points. Every time Zidane attacks, he's shaving off about one-tenth of its maximum HP. That kind of foreknowledge lets us make an informed decision about how far we can push the boss while trying to steal its items, and in a desperate situation, whether to go aggressive and push for a win, or play defense and use healing items. This has been Toya. Thank you for joining me today. If you liked what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing to support the channel. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Tawoya, on Twitch at DecodeToya, and of course, right here at RPG Maniacs.